So now we have our fifth key concept. Inflation is everywhere and always a monetary phenomenon. Flipped a bit, we can say that inflation is a deliberate act of policy. Here's what one wag had to say about this matter. Paper money eventually returns to its intrinsic value. Zero. That was Voltaire in 1729. Of course, he was a bit too pessimistic in his assessment as this German woman proves by using her furnace to liberate the intrinsic heat content of paper money. John Maynard Keynes, the father of the branch of economics that utterly dominates our lives, had this to say about inflation. Lenin was certainly right. There is no more positive or subtle or sure means of destroying the existing basis of society than to debauch the currency. By a continuing process of inflation, governments can confiscate, secretly and unobserved, an important part of the wealth of the citizens. The process engages all of the hidden forces of economics on the side of destruction and does it in a manner that not one man in a million can diagnose. Given that the destructive, corrosive effects of inflation are so well understood by the architects and the administrators of our monetary system, it's fair to wonder exactly what the plan here is. Now, finally, here in Chapter 10 of the Crash Course, we can string together these three very important dots. Number one, in 1971, the U.S., and by extension the world, terminated the last connection to a gold restraint and federal borrowing turned the corner, never to look back. Concurrently, the money supply turned the corner, piling up at a much faster rate than the growth of goods and services. And so we get to data point number three, which is that inflation is the fully predictable outcome of data points one and two. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. All connected, all saying the same thing, with profound implications for your future. Now, if you're of a mind that there's no reason that all three of these graphs cannot just continue to exponentially accelerate to ever higher amounts without end, then there's no point in watching the rest of the crash course. However, if you don't happen to believe that, then you're going to want to see the rest of this. There is literally nothing more important for you to be doing right now than gaining an understanding of how these pieces fit together, assessing the risks for yourself, and taking actions to prepare for the possibility of a future that's substantially different from today. Now that we've covered compounding, money, and inflation, you have the tools to get the most from the remaining sections of the crash course. We have a few more dots to connect. Let's go. During the crash course, you will often encounter numbers that are expressed in trillions. How much is a trillion? You know what? I'm not really sure myself. A trillion is a very big number and I think it would be worth spending a couple of minutes trying to get our arms around the concept. First, a numerical review. A thousand is a one with three zeros after it. A million is a thousand times bigger than that, and it's a one with six zeros after it. At this level, I can still get my mind around the difference between these two numbers. A million dollars in the bank is a very different concept from a thousand dollars in the bank, and I can really get that. A billion, then, is a thousand times bigger than a million and it's a one followed by nine zeros. And a trillion is a thousand times bigger than that, and it's a one followed by twelve zeros. So a trillion is a thousand billions, which means it's a million millions. Uh, You know what? I don't know what that means. I can't visualize that. So let's take a different tack on this. Suppose I gave you a thousand dollar bill and said you and a friend had to spend it all in a single evening out in the town. You'd have a pretty good time. Now suppose you had a stack of $1,000 bills that was 4 inches in height. If you did, you know what? Congratulations, you are a millionaire. A stack of $1,000 bills 4 inches high, and you are a millionaire. Now suppose you wanted to enter the super elite of the wealthy and have a billion dollars. How tall of a stack of $1,000 bills would that be? The answer is a stack only 358 feet high seen here barely reaching a third of the way up the Petronas Towers. Now how about a stack of thousand dollar bills to equal a trillion dollars? How tall would that stack be? Think of an answer. Well that stack would be 67.9 miles high. And I meant stack too, not laid end to end or anything cheesy like that. A solid stack of thousand dollar bills 67.9 miles high. Now that's a trillion dollars. That still doesn't do it for you? Okay, I want you to imagine then that you're in a car on a roadway that's lined at the side with a sideways stack of thousand dollar bills. 
A nice, compact, rectangular column of $1,000 bills is snaking along the roadside next to you as you drive, the whole way. And you drive along, brrrr, without stopping, for a little more than an hour, and the entire way, there's that stack of $1,000 bills right next to you on the side of the road the whole way. Said another way, the amount of money created in the past four and a half months in our economic system if it had been printed up as $1,000 bills and stacked along the side of the road, would stretch from Springfield, Mass. to Albany, New York. So there it is. Either you can visualize the stack better by driving along next to it, or by standing on top of it, or any other way you wish, as long as you can find a way to express this statement in a way that's meaningful for you. But make no mistake, a trillion is a very, very big number. And we should not be lulled into complacency simply because it's too big to really get our minds around. That should drive us to action instead. Keep this lesson in mind as we discuss the total accumulated debts and liabilities of the United States, which are now many trillions of dollars. <laughs>